Xenoblade Chronicles, a series known for its deep gameplay and memorable characters. However, in my quest to deliver strange and otherwise extraordinary Xenoblade challenges, today I find myself looking at one of the series' most underused features, the jump button. As if it wasn't for making me laugh every time Ryan alley-oops off a cliff, then there's literally no point in this feature. So I welcome you to join me as I answer the question of is it possible to beat the entire Xenoblade trilogy without jumping? Starting out with Xenoblade 1, things are looking promising, as you can play the whole game all the way up to the second visit to Prison Island before you encounter the first and only jump, as after activating the control device, it seems like you need to jump off the catwalk. But to overcome this, you have two options. You can either make your way back up through the behemoth nest and drop down, or you can just skip travel back to the start. Now that was fairly straightforward, but moving on to Xenoblade 2, things become a lot more complicated. You can play all the way up to entering the abandoned factory in Chapter 4 until you need to jump through the missing window, and at first it seems like you're out of options. And you would be, that is, unless you use a modified speedrunning trick. Under normal circumstances, you'd use this trick in Chapter 3 in order to perform the tidy gate skip, but unfortunately that doesn't work at the factory. But what does work is instead of switching from Nia to Rex, switching from Nia to Tora, as Tora is short enough so that when he swaps with Nia, he's set above the ledge and can cross over. This is interestingly not the only place you have to jump in the game, as immediately after you encounter this raised vent, which despite my best efforts, you're unable to use the same trick twice. Meaning, unless new tech is discovered, you cannot beat Xenoblade 2 without jumping. However, if we were to continue on past this point, then the next time you'd need to jump is at the boxes just before the encounter with Lila, which you can fortunately get past using the earlier method, with the final time you need to jump being at the beginning of the Spirit Crucible. However, you can overcome this by just landing on the opposing rocks at the right angle. So that was a disappointing turn, but finally, closing out with Xenoblade 3, the first jump is right at the start of the game, and unfortunately, however hard I tried, I couldn't find a single way around it. So if we were to continue on past this point, like with Xenoblade 2, then the only other jump in the game is during Ethel's Hero Quest, as to get through the Wall of the Great Hand, you have to jump into this passageway. Luckily though, you can overcome this with enough HP, as falling down from the top left of the wall allows you to survive the drop. However, under normal gameplay, you'd have to do an exceeding amount of grinding to get anywhere close to enough HP. I theorise that you might be able to bait the towels into afflicting blowdown, but that's merely speculation. So with that said, as it stands right now, there's only two dastardly jumps that stand between the Xenoblade community and perfection. If anyone has any ideas on how to overcome these jumps, then please let me know. But with that said, if you like what I'm doing here, subscribe. And as always, 